My name is Steve Thomas. Uh, there was a big photograph of me. There's some, yes, Steve Thomas, Chief Executive of the Welsh Local Government Association. Uh, God, I got a big part in on that photograph, didn't I? Um, I'm here to introduce this afternoon's session. I'm going to try and uh, get away from that sort of a lax chairmanship or chairpersonship you had this morning with Sarah Cro Crowley from Bernardo's, who just let it get out of control with you unruly lot. Uh, we'll introduce some discipline back into proceedings this afternoon. Um, I'm already two minutes into the time and I'm running over time. Um, what we're going to do is make some slight changes to the agenda because uh, we did run slightly over time this morning. Um, we've started back obviously 15 minutes later. Uh, I mean, Sally will start at 2.10, finish around 2.30, uh, and then we'll go into the workshops. The workshops will commence to say 2.30. Uh, you'll finish in the workshops round about quarter to four, uh, in which time you'll undertake uh, answering the questions set out also completing a self questionnaire and feeding back within your groups. I understand the political, uh, sorry, the professional networks are in the relevant groups, so you'll feed back within the groups. Now you're going to ask me uh, where the workshop's going to be held. Um, they're not as they were this morning in this room, uh, in the totality of them in this room. Uh, if you've got a green dot on you, hands up, those are a green dot. Oh, well done. Uh, the green dots are on the left. Uh, this is not political, let me add. Um, the, the green dots are on the left, the yellow dots on the right. Yeah, that's slightly political. Um, and the blue dots are upstairs in the Muller room. Uh, finally, the purple dots, mm, purple, eh? uh, purple dots are in the syndicate room one, which is uh, downstairs and stress the Muller room upstairs. Uh, you've, you've got the dots in there, so I'll repeat that uh, when Sally's finished, just to make sure that, like me, you don't get confused by all this information. Um, just a couple of reflections myself before uh, I introduce Sally. Um, I did a conference, funny enough, on ACES this morning with children in Wales, and uh, just reflecting on some of the work we've been doing as a WLGA with 60 partner organisations uh, in the Cymru Well Wales initiatives. I'm delighted that we've managed to secure Alison Francis uh, in terms of the work that we're doing on uh, the, the ACES hub across Wales. I never quite thought it would get to this when we actually set up the partnership. When you set up all partnerships, there's always that feeling that it might be a motherhood and ha apple pie partnership. Uh, it might be one of those partnerships that ends up uh, sort of languishing in the Welsh Academy of Pointless Partnerships, the Metropole Hotel in Landred, Nod Wells, uh, where all great partnerships go to die. Um, and f from, from, from our point of view, there was that concern. Uh, but I think we have brought to this partnership uh, some real, um, real outcome-focused work, and I'm delighted that we've defined the partnership by the three key themes, namely the first thousand days, uh, ACEs, uh, and employability, and there's a link between those three strands. Um, you may not uh, detect this from my accent, but I am originally from Ebervale, um, and I've recently gone very posh. I've moved to Abergavenny. Um, so that's, that's a definition of poshness in Blinding Went. Um, I was checking as a result of my move what that meant, and it's fascinating when you look at some of the statistics. Uh, between Gilwyn and Brimau, which is Gilwyn the outskirts of Monmouthshire and Brimau the outskirts of Blaney Gwent, is 4.3 miles. And in that 4.3 miles, you travel that 4.3 miles, and the severe level of po poverty for children in those 4.3 miles double. They double. 20% of the kids in Blaney Gwent are in severe poverty. Surprisingly, 10% of the kids in Monmouthshire are uh, in severe poverty, which sort of suggests that, you know, despite the fact and the emphasis that we're putting uh, on places like the valleys, we are still not hitting where we want to hit. Public policy can make a difference, and what, what we want to do uh, in terms of the partnership that we've got is make a difference. And my own personal, and I don't want to sound pretentious here, but my own personal I have a dream moment would be if our politicians in the National Assembly would stop talking about ambulance waiting, uh, ambulance uh, target time, stop talking about A&R re uh, referrals, and actually start talking about prevention. Make prevention the order of the day. Let's, let them have great raging debates about prevention rather than about targets, 
which frankly are starting to, uh, I think, bore large parts of the Welsh public. What the public want to see, as I think, is investment, and ultimately, when it comes to ACEs, what people want to see, the greatest cure for ACEs is to make sure that people have jobs and are employable. So, this afternoon, we're going to pick up on some of these themes. I'm delighted my old mate Sally Holland is here. Sally, and, uh, Sally is the Children's Commissioner for Wales, absolutely passionate advocate uh, for children. Uh, Sally is a former professor, uh, probably still is a current professor, I would imagine. You don't give these things up to you. Um, is a social worker by trade and a damn good person. Uh, we've worked very uh, closely with Sally recently on a national advocacy framework for children and uh, an announcement we made last week, which I'm very proud about to uh, sign with Sally, the announcement we made on care leavers. So I think all uh, positive stuff. So delighted to have Sally here this afternoon and she's going to be talking about a child's rights approach to ACEs. Sally, over to you. Thank you very much um, for the invitation uh, to speak this afternoon. Really delighted to be here. I'm sorry I missed this morning. Uh, like Steve was, it's really is conference season. I think it's something to do with it being March and people having to use up their budgets by then. <laughs> it was online CSE this morning and ACES this afternoon, but as um, Sarah from NSPCC said to me they're not they're not unconnected and she's she's quite right and in both I talked about a children's uh, rights approach let's just yep okay so quite a few familiar faces here I'm sure most of you know my role as, as independent uh, champion for children in Wales and my job is to safeguard and promote children's rights under the United Nations Convention um, for the rights of the child and um, when I'm talking about a specific topic I tend to sort of highlight which rights are particularly relevant to the topic at hand but of course all, all of the 42 rights under the um, United Nations Convention are really really relevant today um, freedom from harm, right to health, right to education, right to family support, right to survival, Article 6, right to life and survival, they're all really relevant here. There are young carer, for example, which has got lots of strengths and I think should have a positive identity, but also that they may need extra support because they're a young carer, then they're not going to be able to take up their rights to education, to relax and play, etc. as a young carer. We need to make sure that children are trained in skills um, so that they um, can take up their rights. They need to be trained and understood they, and learn. All of all children, not just children experiencing ACEs, need to learn what a healthy relationship is. They need to learn about uh, resilience. They need to uh, and, and how to be and practice being resilient. Um, they, they need to be empowered in all sorts of ways. They can't, we can't expect them to take part in our service development and to be actively helping to shape our services if we haven't given them the skills that we do. So that's a, the photo is one of my sessions with my Young People's Advisory Panel. It's the, the North Wales Group. And in every day I spend with my strategic advisors um, who are age 11 to 18, um, we always do some skills development work as well. So I don't, don't go straight into saying, come on now, um, you've got to scrutinise my work and hold me to account. We start with skills development because we can't assume that young people have, have um, the skills to scrutinise, to listen to each other, to take part in a formal meeting, etc. So similarly, we should give children young trust, uh, trustees training, governors training, um, directors training, etc. The fourth element is participation. Um, this is the aspect of children's rights most people are, are familiar with. We need to make sure, sure that children participate in individual decisions about their lives. So children experiencing ACEs um, need to, um, who we, we are concerned about, need to play an active part in, in, um, in shaping how they can be helped to resolve those ACEs um, and how to, how to mitigate them and how to come at, um, to, um, go on to lead a, 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 a full and a fulfilled life despite the ACEs that they've experienced in their lives. So they need to be actively involved in that. We all know 
we, we've all learned the hard way, I think, that doing things to people doesn't work as well as doing things with people. And that's why we need children to participate in individual work with them actively. But we also need children to participate um, at a strategic level as well on our service development. Um, we will get the best ideas um, from children. Uh, we will get better and broader and more creative ideas if we include children in our planning for service delivery for ACEs. It's so important we don't just do our ACEs work to children, especially at this sense of swooping in from, ex from externally to um, sort out um, children's ACEs. I'm sure nobody here would take that approach, but there's a risk that sometimes our rhetoric sounds a bit like that, um, but that we will do that with them. And children living in areas of multiple deprivation often speak to me with real passion about what they want to change about their local area or the, even their family situation and actually have very strong views about their environment that they're living in, uh, both within the home and in their community. And the final aspect of a, a children's rights approach is accountability being accountable to children about what we're trying and their families about what we're trying to achieve when we're taking an ACEs informed approach being accountable to them by first of all informing them about how we were going to do it what we're trying to get to and then being accountable and informing them about what success will look like can we answer that question will we know if they asked us that question what will success look like how would we answer it and can we answer it in a way that's accessible for them to understand are we accountable about where our budgets are going um, under the public service boards are we pooling our budgets and therefore how are how much of a proportion of that is going to go to to directly help children and their families how can how, have we got any mechanisms in place so that children, young people, and their families can scrutinise our work? Have we got any a, any way of doing that? All questions to consider, I think, as part of a children's rights approach. I'm absolutely convinced that um, any public body that takes a children's rights approach will be stronger and more effective in the services that they deliver. Um, they won't. Um, it's not. We're not doing it to. Um, tick a box and to say, oh yeah, we take a, we, we, we really like children's rights. It, I actually strongly believe that the, your your approach will be more embedded and um, and will work better. Well, the better outcomes if you do it. And of course, this all links really clearly to the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. And I've been working with Sophie Howe, who I know who was here this morning, to um, to work with public bodies to see the link and the integration between a children's rights approach and the approach that we're all trying to take under the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. It's quite clear that, um, that if we successfully do involvement and collaboration, which I've just been talking quite a bit about, if we look to the long term, if we work together, and if we're taking a preventative approach, we're also fulfilling a children's rights approach. And please um, watch this space from my office and her office for some, uh, what I hope will be really helpful tool, a really helpful toolkit for public bodies, which will help you um, self-assess really how well you're bringing in children's rights into your well-being of future generations um, approach in your, in your public body. We're doing that with bodies, they're testing it for us so, so that it's something really useful rather than something you just tick. So that will be coming out after Easter. Okay, so just to summarise, because I'm nearly out of time, why do we need a children's rights approach to successfully tackle ACEs? Well, we take away stigma, uh, potential stigma, by using rights talk rather than deficit talk. It means that we do with people, not to people, and we know that we'll get better solutions if we collaborate with people rather than try to impose solutions on them. It means that we consider equality and discrimination uh, and non-discrimination, which means we focus our mind on who's missing out, why, and any unintended consequences of our well-meaning policies um, and, and practices. And um, we, we, have, we will be fulfilling the Welsh law, which says that um, we must embed a children's rights approach in everything we do. I think that we will, be not, we will be fulfilling Welsh law, the children's rights measure, and we will be giving the ACEs agenda a coherence, 
within an internationally accepted timeless framework rather than being what some might see as the, the a shiny new concept, which I know is exactly not what um, the CESA's agenda is about or, or trying to be. So um, I, I have been, have been already this morning um, with the Cabinet Secretary calling on the Welsh Government really to absolutely embed this approach, the, the, um, a children's rights approach, uh, within a wider and clearly articulated goal of reducing inequalities in child poverty and um, ensuring that we that they are fulfilling their le legal duty to pay due regard to children's rights in everything that they do. If you want to talk to me any more about that or, or ask to receive any information as we publish more about a children's rights approach, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Diolch yn fawr.